Hi there, folks. Welcome to another edition of Healthy Happenings coming at you from Natural Partners Full Script Television. I am Dr. Holly Lucille, and this is what's happening today. We're going to be talking about nicotinic acid and the heart. And to do that, I want to introduce to you Dr. Joseph Michael Keenan. He's an MD and he's a former professor of family medicine and a joint professor of food science and nutrition at the University of Minnesota. Joe, thanks for being here. My pleasure. So, and Dr. Keenan, Heart Health Month. This is a good time. Yeah, yours. I didn't mean to talk over you there. Absolutely, it is Heart Health Month. Um, it blows me away that cardiovascular disease continues to be the number one killer of men and women across the board in the United States. And so, I'm very excited to have you here. But before we get started into our topic, tell the viewers just a little bit about yourself. You've got quite a background. Well, um, I'd be delighted. Uh, I started out family medicine and did 17 years of general family medicine practice, including OB and pediatrics and emergency medicine, and also taught medical students in my practice. So it was kind of fun when the university called and said, say, hey, you're a pretty good teacher. How would you like to come and join us? And uh, I went expecting to be primarily a teacher and it turned out I liked research a lot too. Ah. So I got interested in um, preventive cardiology is the kind of general term. It had a focus on lifestyle things as well as um, food supplements. We did some oatmeal, oat, oat brand, uh, um, some uh, soluble fiber research. And then I got into nicotinic acid research and that's where Probably the focus of most of my heart research was done. And um, after I thought I retired in 19, um, sorry, in, in 2008, the market went bad. So I had to uh, resume working as an ER physician. So I've done that for about 10 years now and uh, enjoy that too, actually. Wow. Well, thank you. I mean, your work with nicotinic acids is exactly why I have you here today. So I appreciate it. So tell me, how common are heart attacks and cardiovascular disease uh, globally? Well, um, you're asking a really, really important question because it has become epidemic globally. About 80% of heart attacks are occurring in the developing world right now. Uh, that's, that's really scary because they, this has more than doubled in the past. Um, in the United States, we're actually doing a little better. We have a slightly lower heart attack rate. Uh, we can do better. But uh, last year, 600,000 people died of heart disease in our country. Um, so that's about, that's, that's still the number one killer in our country. That's over 25% of the deaths in our country. So it's a, it's a big problem. So, I mean, very common we hear, uh, and certainly my patients come in saying that their doctor has prescribed them a statin medication based on their cholesterol numbers. Are there, you know, different ways to deal with this epidemic, and now global, as you say, this is getting worse and worse and worse, than just this straight on, here, take this statin therapy? Well, uh, the, the recent you know, National Cholesterol Association guidelines and American Heart Association guidelines have just come out with statin as the bedrock therapy. So basically, if you have a risk of a heart attack greater than 7.5% in the next 10 years, you get guidelines say you should be on a statin. Now, statins are the best LDL or bad cholesterol lowering drug that we have, but uh, <laughs> 20% of us can't take statins, and I'm one of them. Uh, statins have kind of ruined my muscles. So we have to have options for other folks. Also, if you if you look at the cost benefit of interventions, they, they have something called QALY, Q-A-L-Y. A quality adjusted life year for someone taking statins costs $33,000 a year. That's $33,000 to save one person one life, or one, one year of life. And now, that's maybe affordable in the United States, and not even necessarily for everybody, but in the developing world, this is, this is too much money. Yeah. Uh, for, we really do have to be looking broader than statins for, for modest cholesterol 
uh, problems or risks, and also for people that, that can't take statins like me. Yeah, and you're right. There is a genetic variant that um, you will, the risk benefit ratio is definitely in the risk category for those 20% that cannot take statins and you end up with uh, deeper, deeper problems. So I appreciate that. So let's get to the subject of the day, nicotinic acid and heart disease. So what is nicotinic acid and how is it used to manage the risk of heart problems? Well, nicotinic acid is a vitamin, uh, niacin, uh, niacin, the vitamin niacin. Now, to be clear, that niacin has two forms, nicotinamide, which has no cholesterol benefit, and nicotinic acid. So um, this vitamin is available over the counter, and the vitamin supplement dose is only 50 milligrams a day. Uh, vitamin, uh, if you just took a multivitamin, for instance, it isn't going to be enough. So you, you really need to have a higher dose. Now, then we get into immediate release niacin, which is the original form, the vitamin form, you might say. And then um, as we found out that high doses of immediate release cause very high incidence of flushing, yeah. a kind of a unfortunate side effect of nicotine. Then they've developed extended release niacin or nicotinic acid, and that um, reduces the flushing sense dramatically. Um, now we're talking for immediate release four to 6,000 milligrams a day. For extended release, you'll need about 2,000 milligrams a day, sometimes less than that. Um, and uh, the nice thing is, is the cost uh, is than, uh, cost for statins, for instance. Even generic statins cost about a hundred, about a dollar thirty-five a day, um, and non-generic are quite a bit more than that. But a uh, generic, over-the-counter, no prescription needed nicotinic acid is only about twenty-five cents a day. Um, so we we have a nice you know, cost benefit there. Yeah, so talk to me because I know this is where your research ended up sort of uh, coagulating in mostly. Talk to me about the research when it comes to heart disease and this incredible nicotinic acid. And I have to say, you're right about the flushing and the higher doses with that immediate release because that's certainly uh, one thing because it's uncomfortable. It almost feels like you have an allergic reaction to something or you're having a hot flash and then it, it can last for quite some time. And it certainly is something that decreases compliance when you're looking to take care of somebody with perhaps elevated LDL cholesterol. So uh, talk to me about the research, especially in compared to statins, when we're talking about decreasing the risk for these cardiovascular problems that are so prevalent. Sure. Well, um, nicotinic acid is actually the first intervention. It's not really a drug. I guess I won't call it a drug. But the first intervention in a large clinical trial that showed decreased mortality and de decreased uh, cardiac event. Um, the, the area I've done most of my research in is called wax matrix extended release niacin. And I would, I would caution our viewers to be sure if, if you can talk to your doctor or, or um, check on this to, to only use statin, I mean, only use nicotinic acid that has been researched in a clinical trial and demonstrated to be effective because there are many over-the-counter nicotinic acid formulations, some of them called no-flush niacin, that are worthless. And um, I have a, a study comparing no-flush niacin to wax matrix, extended release niacin, and no-flush is no-flush because there's no absorption. Right. <laughs> it basically goes right through and out. So, uh, so it's not, not delivering a, a functional dose at all. And once again, we're at a cost-benefit ratio that's not worth it because it's not doing anything. Exactly. Um, now, uh, there are two types of commonly used extended release niacin. One is called a polygel formulation, which is basically a capsule with niacin mixed with methyl cellulose. And that, that, does, that does release quite nicely over an average of six hours. Unfortunately for some people, the polygel capsule, if you've got, let's say, hyperperistalsis, you, your stomach and your bowel uh, churn well, you might um, bust the capsule a little early and get it to absorb too fast, almost like immediate release. Um, so we do have some higher in 
incidence of flushing the, um, and a slightly lower uh, LDL benefit. The wax matrix has been demonstrated both in our trials and, and uh, in uh, other dissolution studies to be um, really very effective at dissolving over about six hours. Now, let me just add that really long extended release is not especially good because it does cause some liver toxicity. Uh, that's the other side effect that we worry about with uh, nicotinic acid. So we like an, if you want to call it sort of intermediate extended release, which is just over six hours rather than 12 or 24 hours where you get a little bit too much effect on the liver. Um, but uh, we, can, we can basically manage all the side effects if you know how to do niacin. There's an interesting um, book um, that a fellow named William Parsons wrote. William Parsons was one of the investigators on the original coronary original niacin study. And he was so upset that nobody started using, or many people tried using niacin doctors, and they didn't learn how to manage it right. Uh, so they had a lot of people dropping out because of uh, flushing side effects primarily. Yeah, um, yeah. And then they invented these very long extended release that had no side effects, or no flushing side effects, but had bad liver effects. So uh, he finally wrote a book to tell people how to do this. It's called uh, Cholesterol Without a Diet, or Cholesterol Lowering Without a Diet, uh, Nicotinic Acid Therapy. All right. All right. So Cholesterol Lowering Without a Diet, Nicotinic Acid. Uh, so, and as you're saying, nicotinic acid, a vitamin, very cost effective. You got to know how you do how to do it right. So, for both practitioners and perhaps patients that are watching, make sure that you utilize a form of the nicotinic acid that has been shown to work in the published studies. That's always a good go-to, wouldn't you say? Exactly. Yes, that's very very important. So, um, and the the other thing I would advise is you. Should should do this from your doctor because it's important to be measuring a few tests in addition to your cholesterol levels you should measure liver function you should measure uric acid every now and then someone will get some gout side effects and you should also uh, uh, measure homocysteine these these complications are all manageable reversible um, if you will and it's a very very nice drug we didn't talk about its benefits but I should just mention it's the best drug in terms of a profile of lipid lowering benefits. It not only lowers LDL, the bad cholesterol, by 20%, it raises your good cholesterol by about 20%, uh, even more sometimes. And the, uh, the other thing that only nicotinic acid can do uh, of the drugs available is lower LP little a. That's a lipoprotein, that's a very serious risk factor if you've got this in your genetics. It also lowers triglyceride. Now, none of our drugs do all of those things, but let me just add, we've now discovered um, in some special studies uh, looking at the vascular response to nicotinic acid, that it lowers uh, the oxidative uh, potential of the, the lining of your blood vessel to, to oxidate LDL. That's the way LDL becomes atherogenic. It also lowers monocyte um, chemoattractant factor or protein. Uh, this is what attaches the, the elements, the beginning elements of, uh, of plaques in your arteries. So it does things that are non-lipid as well as lipid. Those yeah. are quite important. That's excellent. So nicotinic acid, folks, many mechanisms of action to help lower the risk factor for this ever so prevalent cardiovascular disease. It is February. It is your heart month. So here at Healthy Happenings, we're just reminding you all to heart your heart. And Dr. Joseph Michael Keenan, thank you so much for your very illustrious career. Um, and I'm happy that you're back at work because I think people are benefiting from it. So, all right, folks, we're going to see you next time. Thank you so much.